Welcome to this video tutorial on how to set up an RTK mission with the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise. In this tutorial, we'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up the mission using the Mavic 3 Enterprise, from setting up the hardware to enabling the RTK functionality within the Pilot 2 application, which is pre-installed on the controller. So if you're ready to take your drone map into the next level and start achieving centimeter level accuracy, Let's get started. Before you go into the field, you'll first need to gather some information, as it will be required prior to flying the mission. First, if you are a new Kesper customer and have not yet flown an RTK mission, you will need to gather the latitude and longitude and altitude of the control point you will be mounting the base station over. This information will need to be input into the DJI Pilot 2 app when you are setting up your mission. Next, you will need to enter this information into Kesper Cloud, but you'll need to do some conversions first. The latitude and longitude will need to be converted to northing and easting, and the altitude or height will need to be converted to meters. If you need a hand, the link on the screen will take you to a website that can perform the conversions for you. In addition, you'll need to provide the EPSG code and the antenna height will always be 1.77 meters if you are using the DJI EDRTK2 base station that is used throughout this video. If you are already a Kespri customer that has flown RTK missions and already have control point information in Kespri Cloud, you will need to convert the northing and easting to latitude and longitude. This information will need to be input into the Pilot 2 app prior to flying the mission. You're not actually converting and changing these values in Kespri Cloud. Rather, the values you are already using will need to be converted, and the new values will be inputted into the Pilot 2 app prior to flying the mission. You're actually still going to be selecting an existing control point coordinate set when you go to upload the photos after flying the mission. When getting to your job site, the first piece of equipment you should set up is your base station. You want to make sure it has as much time as possible to log GPS data before flying in order to make sure that there's enough data to be used for RTK corrections. In this video, we will be setting up the DJI Mobile Base Station. However, you can use a non-DJI Base Station or connect to an NTRIP account, but we will not be going over that in this video. First, locate the survey control point at the site you are going to fly. You will need to mount the base station directly over this control point. And as previously mentioned, you'll need to have the coordinates of the control point handy prior to flying the mission. If you have not already done so, you will also need to enter the control point information in Kesper Cloud. The coordinate information in Kesper Cloud and also the coordinates that are provided in the Pilot 2 app will be used to fly the mission and also when uploading the photos after the mission. When setting up the tripod, make sure to adjust the legs to the appropriate length and if needed, you can secure the tripod to the ground by stepping onto the pegs at the base of each leg. Next, insert the pole into the tripod and tighten. Make sure the bottom tip of the pole is directly over your control point and is making contact. When your setup is complete, it should resemble what you see here. The pole is straight, and the tip of the pole is centered directly over the control point. As long as the unit is level, according to the built-in bubble leveler, and the tip of the pole is centered directly above and even making contact with your control point, you are good to go. Remove the battery cover from the battery compartment, insert the battery, and replace the cover. If you have not yet installed the RTK module on the drone, Install it now by inserting the module into the PSDK port on top of the drone and securing using the two screws on each side. To power on the unit, press and hold down the center button for a couple of seconds until you can hear the fan running. You will observe it going through a startup sequence.
the left indicator will turn solid green once the remote controller is turned on and connected. The center indicator will turn solid green once it establishes a connection with a sufficient number of satellites. The right indicator will display the mode the RTK module is in, and it needs to be in mode 5, which is represented by a blinking green light that flashes 5 times, pauses, and then repeats. The mode can be changed by pressing the right indicator once and then pressing again until the desired mode is connected. Turn on the remote controller by pressing the power button once and then pressing and holding again for a few seconds. Power on the drone by following the same steps. Press the button on the battery once and then press and hold again for a few seconds until the drone powers on. Open the Pilot 2 app and tap Enter Camera View. Access the Settings menu by tapping the three dots in the upper right-hand corner. Towards the bottom center, tap the RTK icon. Enable both the RTK Positioning and Maintain Positioning Accuracy Mode options. From the Select RTK Service Type menu, choose DRTK2 Mobile Station. When prompted, Restart the drone by powering it off and then back on. When the drone powers on, access the RTK menu again within settings. Choose Not Connected next to Status and select your base station from the list. Once connected, you'll want to verify a few things. Make sure the positioning of the aircraft shows fix and the mobile base station has coordinates. Also, scroll down and make sure you see values for standard deviations. Choose Advanced Settings and provide the password 123456. Change the latitude and longitude to reflect the actual coordinates of the control point the base station is using. Tap the OK button at the bottom to save your changes. Back out of Advanced Settings and back out of RTK Settings screen. You may notice a red warning in the upper left-hand corner that says Sudden RTK Position Data Change. You'll want to power cycle your drone upon seeing that warning. Now that we have the base station set up and connected, let's take a look at a few important camera settings that will ensure the best quality photos are taken during the mission. You'll notice you have your camera settings towards the upper right part of the screen. The first thing you will want to confirm is that the camera is in photo mode and not video mode. If you see a video icon, tap once, choose the photo icon, and make sure it's in single shot mode. First, change the camera mode to S, which stands for shutter priority. This mode tells the camera that a fixed shutter speed must be used. The camera can adjust the exposure and ISO. Also, change the shutter speed to 1 1,000th. This is to avoid motion blur. Next, we need to make sure auto exposure is set to unlocked. This will allow the camera to adjust the exposure with aperture and ISO. You will see the letters AE towards the top right, and the padlock icon should reflect that it is unlocked. Next, make sure focus mode is set to AFC, which stands for Auto Focus Continuous. Tap the icon if you need to change the setting. This will recalibrate the focus for each image, which will help prevent motion blur. Tap the three bars in the upper right corner and make sure the image ratio is set to 4x3. This ratio deletes nothing, utilizing the entire sensor. Other settings will crop the image. Also, verify image format is JPEG. Tap the three dots in the upper right. Make sure lock gimbal while shooting is enabled. This will help prevent blurry images. Also make sure mechanical shutter is enabled. A mechanical shutter uses conventional front and rear shutter curtains at the front of the sensor. Leaving this turned off can introduce distortion. 
accept the rest of the defaults and tap anywhere on the screen to exit. Next, exit the camera view by tapping the arrow in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Alternatively, you can use the back arrow button on the controller. From the Pilot 2 home screen, choose an existing mission or create a new mission. When you start your mission, the drone will fly autonomously along the route you have defined. Once complete, it will return to the launch location and land. At that point, you will have two options. If your controller has access to the internet, you can use the installed web browser to access Kespri Cloud and utilize the uploader tool to upload the photos taken during the mission. Alternatively, you can remove the micro SD card from the drone and use a card reader to upload the photos using a computer. Once they have been uploaded, the processing will begin and will result in a single ortho that can be used within Kespri Cloud.